Good morning everyone, it's great to be with you again this morning on this uh, Father's Day of 2021. Now, may I wish all the fathers and grandfathers a wonderful day, whatever it is that you might be doing, wherever you might be doing it. And welcome to our message for today for the Shepherd and Baptist Church. I'm Robert Huff and I'm pleased to be with you today on this occasion. Uh, we're going to uh, look now to our reading for this morning talking about a faithful father and the words of Joshua there's great mighty well-known passages of scripture we find here in Joshua chapter 24 in the last chapter of this great book of the Old Testament and it says something about a declaration we write we, we read here rather now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness Throw away the gods your fathers worship beyond the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. What a declaration we find here. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. What does this have to do with fathers and Father's Day? I guess it ap applies to everybody, in fact. But indeed, as uh, fathers and as people who uh, would hope to lead families and uh, communities in so many ways, uh, so important that we might hear words such as this that come with a conviction that God is the Lord indeed. A dad, Steve Nichols, tells this story on what it means to be a protective father or a protective dad. About a month ago, he says, I bought my two-year-old daughter, Sarah, an aquarium. We went together to the pet store to pick up and pick out fish to put in the tank. One of the fish died. Two weeks ago when Sarah was at her grandparents house my wife flushed it down the toilet and didn't tell my daughter about it this morning Sarah went, found one of the other fish dead she found it caught up in one of the fake plastic bushes my wife called me at the office and said that Sarah had something to tell me in a two-year-old way she then went on to explain to me how the fish had died she found it in the bushes and she and mummy were going to hold a funeral service for it in the backyard I realized that this was the first of many losses that Sarah would experience in life I broke into tears however when the last thing she said to me before she hung up the phone was daddy keep me from getting caught in the bushes Many of us will relate to the desire to protect and to care for our loved ones, even as we're reminded of God's protective love for us in sending his dear son that we might be protected from the wages of sin and death. On this Father's Day, we're reminded that faithful fathers are necessary for stable families. Faithful fathers understand and undertake their role in the home as dictated by the word of God. The moral breakdown in our society is often due in large measure to the failure of men to assume their God-ordained roles. There's no adequate substitute in the home for a strong and spiritual father. The father ought to do for his human family what the Heavenly Father does for his family. The Bible has much to say and that would encourage dads and give us instruction that will lead to a healthy relationship and indeed healthy relationships in the home and beyond. So this morning I want us to look at some attributes of the faithful father and we firstly look at that which starts with relationships. In the real estate world, we often hear uh, the words location, location, location are so important. 
in the, the in, with respect to family and to loved ones, the most important thing is relationship, relationship, relationship. I guess that's why God chose to have a relationship with us as his creation. But the faithful father assumes his duties as the first thing that we might think about this morning. The faithful father is aware of his duty personally to his creator. The greatest commandment for a father is to love God with all of his being. The faithful father fulfills his duty towards his companion. His first priority is to his creator, the second to his companion. He loves his wife with an unselfish love. His leadership is godly, gracious and gentle. Under God's decree, he, he provides all that is necessary for the well-being of his home, his wife, his family. The faithful father carries out his duty to his children. The responsibility of training depends upon greatly upon the father's role. The home is a place of instruction, a place of interaction, interdependence, a place of instilling values and a place of intimacy. Wouldn't it be good if we could just be perfect in all those areas? But if you're like me, then we're generally not perfect in all of those areas. We're a, a work that's in progress. So we go on to explore further of what it might mean to be a faithful father. The father is a verbal teacher. That is, he instructs or speaks the truth to his children as he gives the precepts and the principles of God's word to them, that we might live in relationship with God for the purpose of being able to, to, to uh, share that with our children, with our grandchildren, with our family. The father is a visual teacher. What he teaches verbally, he must be able to put into practice by his daily life. He becomes a model, a pattern for his children to imitate. And then we might say that the father is a vital teacher. Faithful fathers teach their children with con consistency and competency. His effective teaching must be coupled with compassion for the children and a compassion and a comprehension of his children's needs. The scriptures teach that fathers will give an account to God for the training and the teaching of their children. So the second thought we uh, endeavour to understand this morning is the, that the faithful father avoids hidden dangers. And what might they be? Well, selfishness is a danger that the faithful father faces. Quite often, fathers push their children into vocations or lifestyles which please them rather than freeing the child to do the will of God. Slackness is a similar danger. We read in 1 Samuel 3 and verse 13 of Eli, and Eli's house was judged because he refused to restrain his sons from wickedness. In today's permissive society, it's all too easy to allow one's children to run with the crowd and feel that we can do very little about it. But fathers must never be guilty of ignoring the lifestyle of their children or indeed the temptations and the struggles that they face. Every Christian father needs to seek to give biblical direction to his children. A child left to himself brings the parent to shame, according to the scriptures. Slothfulness, that's an old word, isn't it? But nevertheless, it's there. Slothfulness plagues the human race. Many fathers are just too busy or too lazy to fulfill their spiritual and scriptural duties. 
they neglect the responsibility until one day it's too late. We can be busy with all manner of other things, but at the end of the day, it's our loved ones who are with us. And it's they that we need to uh, be able to, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here, uh, invest into their young lives. The father who, who is too lazy to get involved with his children while they're young often lives to regret this fatal mistake later on. And then there's severity. Well, severity is another danger that fathers face. Colossians 3 and verse 21 says this, Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. And then in Ephesians 6 and, and verse 4, it warns, And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. It seems clear then from these passages that it's possible for a father to so impose regulations and restrictions on his children that they find it impossible to live and to live up to his expectations. Caution must be exercised lest as fathers we lose sensitivity to our children. Sinfulness. Sinfulness stalks the best fathers. Fathers must never justify or condone sin in their lives while condemning it in the lives of others, indeed in the lives of their children. Fathers who would effectively lead value personal discipline. Discipline carried out in the best possible way. A father must control his tongue, his taste, and his temper. And so thirdly, this morning, we consider the faithful father who anticipates honourable dividends, if you like. Faithfulness produces a spirit of contentment. Another dividend is commendation. The sovereign Lord, the saints, and the society in which he resides will commend the Father by God's grace effectively as he leads family in the ways of the Lord. Godly families are a standing tribute to the faithful Father. A final dividend of the faithful Father is compensation. Money cannot buy what the faithful Father enjoys as he views the godly lifestyle of his wife and children. His is the altogether satisfying compensation of a job well done. The motto of the faithful father is as we read in the scripture this morning from Joshua 25 and verse 15, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What a declaration to make. Firstly, it has to be a declaration of the heart, a declaration of the mind, a declaration that will be carried across into everyday life experience when we face all the challenges and the struggles of life, but that we might serve the Lord as for me and my house. Every father needs to ask himself the following questions. Am I the father that I want to be or the grandfather that I want to be? Am I the father God wants me to be? Am I the father my family expects me to be or needs me to be? You see, it's never too late. It's never too late to confess our shortcomings before the Lord, to seek his forgiveness, to invite God the Father into the circumstances of your life, into the circumstances of your family, that you might be drawn together in the unity and the desire that God would have for you as a family, to claim his promises. But it comes down to this. Choose this day whom 
you will serve. And I guess that doesn't matter whether we're fathers or mothers or aunts or uncles or cousins or whatever the relationship might be, that we might make a difference in the world that we live, to choose this day whom we will serve, that we might serve the Lord, that we might honour him, that we might regularly, daily invite him into our lives and into the lives of those of our loved ones. Once again, we're reminded of the fatherhood of God and how much God loves the sinner. David Slagle relates this story. He says, Recently, my 21-month-old, who had just learned to say daddy, had been struggling with asthma and also an ear infection for two weeks. He coughed and sneezed continually and his, ra- his, his nose ran like a tap. Each night I came home from work, he ran to me, met me at the door, smiling, coughing, nose running, yelling, Daddy, Daddy. I was not re- re- repulsed by his runny nose or close-range sneezings. In the least, he slimed every shirt that I owned. I love him deeply and enjoy his love for me. I'm reminded that though I'm sick with sin, God loves me deeply and desires that I run to him as a son crying, Abba, Father. And so the challenge for each one of us that we might run to the Lord, as it were, recognising him as our Father indeed, that we might draw from him the ability and the willingness of heart that we might live to the fullest of potential, that we might be everything that our family, our homes and those around us need, that we might have indeed today a very happy Father's Day. May God bless you as you consider some of these thoughts and may I encourage you to go back and to read the whole of Joshua chapter 24, indeed that last beautiful chapter that tells us so much about the heart of God and the willingness of the leaders of the people of God to serve the Lord, that we might be leaders in our homes and in our communities in the best possible way, with the right spirit, with the desire that God might continue to reign supreme over us. Let's pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, today as we open your word, we thank you for the privilege and the freedom that's ours to be able to enjoy and to do that. And to hear again those great and wonderful words from from a leader of the people of God. This day, I will choose the Lord. I will choose his way. Father, may it be for each one of us, whoever we are, wherever we might find ourselves, whatever challenges we might be facing, that we might look to you and recognise your presence, your desire, Lord, to be part of life with us and for us, that we might rest in the loving arms of the Lord Jesus Christ and honour him and glorify his name as we're reminded once again in the way that he died for us on the cross of Calvary, taking the sin of the world upon himself. Lord, Be glorified in us this day. Watch over us as we go our way. Whatever it might be that we find ourselves doing or saying or being throughout the week, may it be seasoned by your love and your grace. We pray in Jesus' name. Well, thank you for listening to me this morning and allowing me to share in this manner with you. May it be that as we continue on throughout the weeks to come, that we might further uncover the great things that God would say to us as we open his word together. May God bless you, watch over you, and keep you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you soon. It's great to have been able to share with you on this particular day in... uh, relationship with the Shepparton Baptist Church.